Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And after the big announcement in the last video, I'm going to touch on some of the other things that have been happening around the factory since in the last stream as well. One of the first things I did when we started was something I've been talking about last week, and that was uh, tweaking some of the priorities on Andragon. So Andragon is the planet where we have all of this uh, stone being produced, because we have stone core chunks coming in here being pulverised, which produces lots of stone, and, there, and also vanilla core chunks, which when pulverised produce more stone and some useful byproducts as well. But we had this idea about trying to mine up lots and lots of all of the, uh, all of the various patches of stuff on this planet, and so I thought it'd be fun to go in and, and change some of the priorities around, because as it was, we're mostly shipping stone out, because it's a stone planet and that's that's what we really wanted. But we were also trying to ship other stuff out as well, but we weren't doing it in particularly large quantities. So I came in and I messed around with a load of the numbers over here. Things like, uh, put, I, I put in, an, uh, I unfiltered the belts uh, uh, that were over here, passing through from this warehouse into this one. I think I blocked off all of these inputs along the top here, um, and, I, and I put in some controls along here that stop these belts running when there's more than a certain amount of stone in this warehouse. And so the idea behind all of that was to try and get a bit more of other stuff flowing through. So some of this vitamin land, some of this copper, uh, this, um, this iron ore here, the uranium, and also, and, and uh, there was some cryonite coming in as well before, and, and various other things like that. And just tried to get all of those flowing through a bit more, and just let, let, the, uh, let the system take some other stuff over. Naturally, this caused some problems, and you can sort of see some of them here. Where we've got um, very well, we've got a lot of things being brought in over here on this ship, and as you can see, we've now kind of filled up. The, we've jammed up the system through here. There's so much vitamelange being unloaded, and it's blocking up these belts and then the copper as well. I suppose it's all blocking all the way up to here. And there's supposed to be a train that will come up this elevator here, go in here, pick up all of this stuff, and take it back down again. And there is, and it comes in over here. But unfortunately, it's pulled in here, and it's 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 it's, it's, it's still full, it's still trying to unload. It is unable to unload. It's, well, it's unloaded maybe a bit less than half of what, it, of what it was carrying. And that's because we have so much stuff in this warehouse that we're having problems. And now, actually, this is not the problem I was expecting. I was expecting us to have too much vitamin land at this point. But no, it seems we've got to, it's the um, it's the uranium, iron and copper ores that have all have, have jammed up along here. And we've, we've got, we should have trains to take those away. But no, we, we, the trains seem to be just, well, these two trains are just sat here. There isn't even one coming over here to pick up some uranium ore. So these, so it turns out we're not actually using enough iron and copper and uranium at the moment. And Therefore, that's what's jammed up around here. So that's interesting, and is rather different from what I was expecting, as I said. So I guess this this is fairly easy to fix. We just need to start using more resources and try and ensure it gets taken from here. And that means we'll need to look at look at the priorities of all these sort of systems, and then try and find try and work out whether we're getting rid of all this stuff fast enough. And it appears that the answer is no, we are not. And then it's supposed to be being taken to a copper ore drop, but there doesn't seem to be one available at the moment, which is. As I say, it just must must be just because we're not using enough copper. So we'll need to um, we'll need to try and increase the amount of everything that we're using. And we're trying to do some research at the moment, and that's usually the big sink for resources. So we shall see how that goes. But in order to try and help this, I've, I've put in this extra warehouse here, and this is there is a fair amount of um, of, of vitamin engine here. And you'll see that, that whilst all of these are underground belts that disappear off to go off to wherever the resources are required, this one goes into a warehouse before then going into the into the underground through the underground here because we had an enormous amount of vitamin engine being brought over from Andragon, and that's being fed up to the uh, processing facility that might put in over here but unfortunately this wasn't keeping up I don't think it was actually broken I think it was just running incredibly slowly so we put in a, a speed beacon here uh, Tristan, no, Tristan has boosted this from being a wide area beacon to a wide area beacon too, so that means this should run a bit faster. I was just saying I don't think it's broken but actually it does appear to be the system has, has stopped we've got we're filled up here or is it yeah, we've now we've run out of fertilizer over here. Okay, so that so we'll need to bring over fertilizer before this will run anymore. And there's supposed to be a train bringing it over to here, but for some reason the train is waiting at fertilizer pickup. Ah, uh, because it is actively filling up at the moment. So yeah, okay, fine. We seem to have yeah we have a very healthy supply of fertilizer. It's just not being brought over to the uh, processing area down here at the at the rate we need it. To. Maybe it's being taken somewhere else, and that somewhere else is using the fertilizer up before it gets to be brought over here. Um, or maybe it's just being used up so quickly by this vitamin lounge processing that we just don't have it coming over here. I, I'm not honestly not sure but the system is, is apparently struggling a little bit here however the warehouse that it all goes into down here has quite a lot of space in it so the vitamin lounge is not the problem at the moment it's the other three ores that are the actual issue right now I did also make a minor fix over here to the uh, the cryonite processing system this one here because this had jammed up and it turned out that there wasn't a filter on this uh, loader here so somehow we managed to get a small amount of um, cryonite crystals I guess this recipe is like some of the other ones where it produces both powder and no 
I don't know why some cryonite crystals ended up in this warehouse then. Oh yes I do. This this one makes them into crystals. So they went up here and then they, they accidentally came back out down here. And so they jammed up the belt here because this is only taking in the powder. And so when the crystals came along here and blocked up the uh, the loader, it, it stopped working and that and that jammed up. So that was easy enough to fix. I just sort of deleted some belts to get to clear out the air crystals that were on the belt and shouldn't be. And then added the filter onto this loader here to make sure that it's only the correct things come out of here. So that's working quite nicely. And if we go back over to Andragon, you can see that the cryonite patch that that was coming from before has now been completely depleted. So that one has now is now completely done. That one is is finished. So we've we've managed to completely harvest that patch now. And I think there was a, there's a patch here and possibly a patch up here, both of which are now gone. And that's why there's some uh, some slightly lonely looking belts here going into this warehouse that aren't going to well, anywhere anymore because yes, we finished finished off those patches. And I say as I say, I think there was one there. There's definitely one there. I think there might have been one in here, but I'm not 100% certain. And we're we're, we're uh, still making inroads into various other ones. So there's uh, the vitamin Lounge patch up here, which is uh, mostly gone. Uh, Tristan's put in some more mines though um, in recently, so we've got we've got a few more patches that we're trying to harvest now. I think those are mostly off to the uh, to the south. Over, these ones over here probably. Uh, this this might explain why we have so much copper and iron available at the moment. But yeah, we're, it's all, we're digging it all up as much as we can and shipping it out either in barrels or in in, in just as piles and piles of stuff, depending on uh, on exactly what it is. But also Mark came out here and he's put in all of these construction pylons. So we now have a robo network covering pretty much the entire planet. At least it's covering all of the uh, all of the resource patches around the planet that we might want to go out to. At least that's the theory anyway. Yeah, when I looked during the stream there were one or two that were remaining because they were in awkward places where a bot hadn't been able to go out and put down another construction pylon because there's a cliff in the way. Yes, here we go. They're having trouble like this. So there's a in this in this case there's a rock there which is just outside the construction radius. As you can see here, so the bot flies out to try and place the uh, the pylon. Uh, this this rock is marked for deconstruction, but because it's outside the construction area, it doesn't actually get deleted by the bots. So unfortunately, it can't get placed. What we could do is we could put another one in here like that. It would spoil a nice neat pattern, but at least another bot would then be able to come over, drop that one in, and then suddenly this would be in the construction area. Another construction bot will come out, take away the rock, and then this bot would be able to put down the pylon. So there's a little bit of an ed edge case, literally being the ed the edge of the uh, construction area. So you can run into a problem like this where you can't actually place the uh, every, all the construction things down that you want to. But there will be a bot on its way over now, I have um, uh, high, uh, every, every confidence. But it's not that one because that's, that's going the wrong way. Hmm. In theory, there will be a bot, a bot will come out here and be able to place that. I also noticed that we don't have enough roboports because there are lots and lots of bots just sort of sitting floating over chests out here and all of the roboports are apparently full. Um, if we take a look inside here, yes it's full of bots, we'll obviously need to get more roboports, but we've run out of them. Hence that one. Uh, so this planet is a little bit, a little bit over, oversupplied with robots, should we say, or undersupplied with roboports. Unfortunately, me breaking the stone supply from Andragon has caused some issues over in the, in the in the energy and matter sciences area because we're supposed to have a flood of stone coming in here being brought directly over from the Andragon uh, station where there's, there, there should be enormous quantities of stone. And there always have been, at least until uh, some idiot came along and decided it'd be a good idea to try and clean out all of the uh, all the rest of the patches on the planet and have a bit more variety coming through and clogged up the system completely. So, uh, <coughs> sorry about that. I guess we're going to have to we're going to have to sort out the ore processing down on Norvis and then it should be okay. Once we can get the spaceship to go away again, it should probably, it'll probably now that all those tweaks and changes have been done, should come back with a lot more, uh, a lot more stone than it did before, and then that'll be able to be brought over to here, and we can start turning it into particle stream once again. And then that can be that can come out this out of here. It can go into all of the systems up here that are using it and processing it and turning it into the various science packs. And so you can see down here we have actually run out of both matter one and matter two in the in the in the warehouses here. They're not being made because we don't have that particle stream. I imagine energy science is probably in a similar position. Let's see if we can find it here it is um it looks to be okay at the moment we have actually no there's a shortage of one of them coming in here what we've we got here we've got that looks like two and three and one down here so yes we, we have a, currently have a shortage of energy four and i'm almost certain that's going to be down to the particle stream problems that we've that i was just uh, pointing to this has been working at various points in the past though, to an extent that we were producing more scrap than we knew what to do with. And you can see there's actually still, despite the fact that I was saying, yeah, none of this is working, there's still quite a lot of scrap making its way out here. And then that then flows up here, joins onto the belts over here, and as you as you probably remember, will come down here to be sorted out and cleaned and processed and turned into useful things back over here. And this was jamming up once again as well, and I think it was the contaminated scrap this time that was the problem. Um, and I think there was too much of it flowing through here, so I upgraded some more belts that were bringing the contaminated scrap through, and also uh, upgraded some of the machines along here 
here. So I've upgraded these belts through here that are bringing in the contaminated scrap for processing, and also the one along the bottom that's bringing it in. I think I put, did I put speed modules in these machines? No, oh no, no, these machines were fine. It was the output speed of the belts along here that wasn't able to keep up. So upgrading the belts around here meant, meant it would suddenly became okay again, despite not improving the machines at all. And so we've now got a bit more scrap coming out here, which can then flow up this way and be, and be processed appropriately. As part of doing that, I realised that a load of scrap was a load of contaminated scrap was coming up here and was going all the way up here, all the way up to the top, and then all the way back down again. And so I put in this shortcut belt here to bring. Actually, no, it turns out it's just clean scrap that's bringing over my, my mistake, and feeding it into straight into the warehouse over here. Unfortunately, I didn't filter it properly where it gets put onto the belts system, uh, which I think is down here somewhere, uh, not this far down here um, and so, so it meant that a lot of these memory cards were ending up going this way as well because I was just putting all I was trying to put all of the uh, scrap onto this side but I hadn't realized there was other stuff on the belts as well and so that caused a problem where the memory ca memory cards would come in and in theory memory cards should go in at the top where they'll come in here they'll be reformatted or whatever is appropriate and then pass through but they were coming in here instead so they, this, this splitter was going well these aren't scrap so it was sending the scrap up this way it was sending the memory cards down this way and that meant they ended up coming all the way down here N none of the, nothing knew what to do with them so they ended up being passed all the way through the system and ending up down at the bottom here in the in the confusion area uh, that caused various problems like they, they, I think I assume they went into this did they get no they wouldn't have gone into here they'd have ended up sitting on the uh, on the belts down here and that's connected up to an alarm so uh, Tristan was told quite quickly that there was a problem um, and it popped up saying something along the lines of uh, Lawrence that doesn't that's not being dealt with on disposal belt so fine it wasn't he's, he's quite right and so Tristan was kind enough to put in this belt across the bottom here to take all that stuff away and dump it back into the uh, into the disposal system over here. So it was fairly easy to tidy up once I put in the correct filter. Um, and, there was, and, then, and now we've now got a belt at the bottom here that can take any, that can deal with anything like that. Now in theory, you shouldn't get things ending up at the bottom here that just need to be passed around the disposal system again. Because if anything, if anything's got down to here is something that the disposal system can't deal with. And so it's, it needs to be it needs to be dealt with somewhere else and put in a completely different place. However, this was a slightly weird one in that it was bit stuff was being put in halfway down the, uh, the um, disposal system and so it was, wasn't being dealt with but could be if it had been put in at the top. I've also just noticed these inserters up here that are passing the uh, any dead train batteries around as they come through. So uh, uh, <laughs> they, I, we, I guess we needed a bit more um, storage space for them because we had too many. So there's now all these boxes to store them, and that means some sort of ridiculous um, inserter dance to bring them over and, and, and uh, before they're unloaded over here to be recharged uh, like this. There you go. So they get put in there and there and there and there and then over there into that box, and then they get unloaded onto the belt. That's very silly. <coughs> After I'd done those upgrades with the belts for the uh, cont contaminated scrap processing, it caught up very, very quickly. It was almost able to keep up, but not quite. So it, uh, it was then able to pull all of the contaminated scrap back out of the whole factory and process it quite quickly. As I've said before, it probably would have been better to have all of the scrap and, and, uh, being brought in by train rather than by belt. But we started off with this system and we wanted to keep it because it, it's sort of nice. It's not the best way to do it, certainly. But it, it, it worked quite nicely early on. Uh, it just wasn't as expandable as a train system would be. Uh, and it's quite nice having it, I think. Yeah, I, I quite like it, it's just I'm aware that it's not the best way to do things. I've been intending for a while to put in a second train for Taras, or for the uh, for the Immersium and Immersite, uh, in order to allow this to be transported away a little bit more quickly. Because uh, I, previously, I've, I've reckoned the uh, the amount of throughput we're getting from the train here has been insufficient. And so we put I've put in an extra piece of line over here with the station at the end of it called Immersite Topweight. And so these tra the trains which are pr uh, bring the Immersite around will head over to Immersite Topweight. Then they'll go to the mixed Immersite pickup, and then they'll go off to drop it, places to drop it off. So the extra station allows us to make sure we don't get any sort of train jam where we could potentially have a, a train sitting in this station and a second one trying to get in, or the other train somewhere and just unable to decide what to do. So we have the train sitting here instead uh, as, a, as a waiting point, and then it can come around like this and fill up. Now it looks like the, putting in a second train has depleted our stocks of um, Immersion plate particularly uh, rather quickly. Uh, we seem to be getting through all of these resources uh, rather fast and, and faster than they're being replenished. However, I think that's better than just not having enough transport available because it means at least then some of it is getting taken around and we are using it up as fast as we're making it rather than having it building up in storage here. So I think that's probably for the best, but if we were going to carry on for a, an arbitrary long amount of time, we would need to increase the uh, the Immersite production a bit for e even further because it doesn't seem to be catching up no matter no matter how long we give it to fill the buffers. 
I also spent some time over on Agnea, improving the speed that we were bringing the um, the enriched Vulcanite through, because we seem to have shortages of that. And I notice, notice now there is actually none on this belt, which is a bit of a concern, and I'm I'm going to have a look into that in a second. But yes, we weren't getting enough of this coming through, So, and uh, it was pr at least partly because the belt was only purple up to about here, and then I hadn't bothered to upgrade this area to purple, so it was a bit too slow. So now I've done that, I've upgraded it, and we now have a bit more enriched Vulcanite, or in theory we can bring a lot more enriched Vulcanite through. Now right now we don't need any, which is why the belt is stopped. There's a control down there that has stopped has stopped it running, but we do tend to need quite a lot of it So in theory this is going to be able to bring a bit more through however as I say I noticed this isn't running Oh, there's a um, there's a control here that uh, stops it stops it from running. That's interesting. I Don't know why it's done like that, but um, Apparently it is uh, the system has been working so I'm, I'm quite tempted not to fiddle with it I don't think it particularly matters um, but it's but it seems it does feel slightly odd that there's a, there's an additional control on on, on this up there. But yes, anyway, I've upgraded the belt to purple all the way up to here. I didn't have any purple splitters, as you can clearly see, and so I've I've got the blue splitter here feeding out on both sides of it, and then doing uh, side balancing here, which means that we can in th as long as these if these belts are both flowing at full speed, we'll get 90 items a second in and 90 items a second out, and this will this will work. Um, it's not the most elegant way of doing it, um, but in the absence of a purple splitter, it's what I could do. Back over in Norbit, I discovered another historical uh, mistake. So <laughs> I have the train uh, bringing over the um, bringing over the matter catalogs and the scrap that's used as the intermediate, which is which is a little bit weird. I mean, it feels like you're using rubbish to make science packs, but sure, why not? It's a kind of matter, I guess. And uh, in, in order to, to run these, you need to take you need to take in for every uh, matter catalog you bring in, whether it's a one or a two, you need ten scrap. So I'd balance the train quite neatly originally to bring in ten times as much scrap as it was bringing in matter one catalogs. Then we upgraded to doing matter to as well and so I added in the additional um, packs down here to be to be carried carried by the train but I didn't put in any extra uh, scrap so we had we had four stacks of matter one four stacks of matter two catalogs and that didn't work because that suddenly we we had twice as many catalogs as we had a scrap to deal with them so I've turned two of the blocks down here or four of the blocks down here two from each one into more scrap so in theory it can bring more scrap over it seemed it looks like the train's instructions are to leave when it has this much scrap in though so it's, um, it's, it's heading off anyway but never mind it is now going to to be balanced uh, because the first two rows of scrap will deal with the two stacks of matter catalog ones and the second two can deal with stacks of matter catalogs two it's fine it's nicely balanced and also I've tweaked the uh, the instructions and so on on the train to make sure it's, it will run a bit more often uh, even when it even if it's not completely full of absolutely everything or completely empty of absolutely everything more importantly I'm also very happy to say that quantum processor production has now caught up. Look, you can see the uh, the box over here is as, as full as it's going to get. I decided that four trains worth was sufficient, and it, uh, and I think it was it two two rows per train or one. No, it must be one row per train because I'm pretty sure I reckoned four trains worth was, uh, but it was more than four trains worth, and therefore it was fine. Uh, and so yeah, we as you can see, we've got loads stacked all, all the way up along here. Even the even the machine at the very far end has stopped running. So we've finally cracked that problem, and that means we can now start thinking about trying to re uh, replenish all the supplies of volume in order to make uh, more. Cable cables and stuff like that, I guess. Now, I think that the Holmium is looking pretty good. If we look over at Holmium cable production, you can see that we've got all the cable we need, the trains are idle, uh, we've got a decent amount of Holmium in here, and this station is currently waiting for a train, actually, so it doesn't have as much Holmium as it would like to, but we do have still have a decent amount of Holmium, uh, at least specifically over here. If we look at the graph, we will probably find out that we are still short of it. Yes, there we go, we're still a bit short of Holmium. However, we have enough to keep things happy as of right now, and that's kind of what's important. Ooh, the, um, the, the Arcosphere balancing is struggling a little bit that's interesting there's a little bit out a little bit out of whack across there hmm. and so while I'm here let's have a quick look across the graph see see what's see what's a shortage at the moment so um, this, is, this is all fine this is all fine uh, we've got a little bit more plastic than we want stone is a bit short so as, as I was saying because I broke Andrigan so I'm, I'm imagining that will probably sort itself out eventually but we're going to need to deal with those um, those ores as I was mentioning earlier but we've got plenty of iron and uh, copper everywhere apparently so that's uh, maybe may not be going to happen for a little while these are all green that's pretty good the enriched vulcanite's a little low but it's basically okay bio catalog three appears to be very very short we um we've been and we've been out ooh, we've been after that for quite a long time I should probably go and have a look at that yeah and there is indeed one type of memory card missing it's the one that comes in from here it's this one so we've run out of these we've run out of these little blue sample things which come from ooh, up, well they are coming through slowly but 
very, very slowly. I saw one go into the underground belt a moment ago, and yep, there it is. So those are being made far too slowly. Uh, oh, and they're being sh there's a shortage of them there as well. So we follow that down to here. There is one machine making those. It has a shortage. Of, okay, it's got a shortage of the purple ones being brought in. Okay. Um, there's, there's some of those being made, but not, not as many as we need. Then down here, there's a shortage of input down here. What are you short of? Is it going to be the green samples? No, it's the purple goop that we need to make. We need to make purple bio samples. Uh, and that's short because it comes from down here, which is short of... Um, uh, spiky data, interesting. So follow. We carry on following this one back. Uh, it comes down to here, and you are short of. Oh, you're short of vitamin spice. That's a weird thing to be short of because that's one of the easier and cheaper vita things to be bringing in. But um, I guess we've just run out of that, and uh, so none of it's getting brought over. If we look over at the uh, the the, um, if we look over at the station over here where it come, where it's brought in. Um, we find out that there is actually loads and loads of vita spice. We've got a huge amount of it. And uh, for some reason the train is not transporting it around. So I guess maybe the station at the other end that's asking for it isn't, isn't asking for it properly. Uh, if we have a look at this train, we can see that the Vitamin Lounge Spice Drop oh, is active. So the train should be filling up here and then going to Vitamin Spice Drop. But notice we want to go to Bioscience Station. Bioscience Station Drop. That's interesting. But the station is full, but it's still trying to go there. So I could send it to Vitamin Lounge Spice Drop like this and then things would kick in and start working again. But I don't know why it's trying to go to bio station, bioscience station when it is apparently not needed there. So let's see. Oh, we've run out of absolutely everything over here. Um, it, that's interesting. Mark has been playing with the uh, the systems over here to get some larger buffers in by the looks of it, uh, which generally is a good idea because we need all of this stuff for the sciences. So yeah, we want to have a good, so healthy supply of them. However, it seems to have caused some problems with the uh, the train system in that the, I think what's happening is that he's requesting a train with the with the uh, controls down here. But he's also got the station here deactivated with the by, by train limit. More, more seriously, he's got it deactivated. He's got it. Ah, he set the train limit to zero rather than deactivating the train. So I think we need to enable disable this station. But I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to let him mess with it in the next stream if we if if we decide we want to carry on any further with this, which we might do. We might carry on a little bit further because we do want to do a little bit more factory spaceship research if we can. Back down on the ground, we're a little bit short of one of the en oh yeah energy four. I talked about that earlier. That's the uh, that's the stone make it to make the matter uh, no to make the particle stream problem. And the same with matter. That's again the stone to make the particle stream. Holmium is still trying to catch up after we made a bajillion quantum processors. Uh, the imocytes are still just very very low because we just. We aren't we aren't digging them up fast enough. Basically, it's getting used up as fast as it comes in. I don't know if we are, I don't know if we actually are filling buffers up. Looking at the numbers here, it, no, they're be, it's being consumed as fast as it's being made. It's being consumed slightly faster than it's being made there. If we look at if we look over the last hour, uh, yeah, it's it's still not a good it's still not a good sign. That's one point seven. Oh, actually, no, we're making the crystal quite a lot faster than we're using it. We're just using the plates up a lot faster than we're making them, which is um. Uh, un unfortunate. So maybe the crystal is okay, and the and we just need to give the plate a bit of time to catch up. I, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but there is the the MSI is still not in a particularly good way. And then, as I say, the uh, the archosphere is bouncing around. So they try to stay in balance as well. And so now I can go on and have a bit of a look at the research. We did mining productivity 14 because that's actually useful, and that's why we're having a bit shortages of uh, biological stuff because that, use bi that uses bio 4 in order to produce it. So that means it uses all of the biologicals all of the way through. So that was kind of hungry, uh, but we got we got through that one eventually. Uh, I think it's been running for multiple streams at this point, so that was that was quite nice. Tristan then did some more zone discoveries, even though they're infinite, just to, because they were quick researches to do while we were waiting for something else to be ready. Uh, he did 171 to 175 of those. So that was a, got, got a few more of those. We, we found some more planets. Whoop -de -doo. Then we did artillery shooting speed five, and apparently artillery shooting speed six, which isn't on the list. Maybe that maybe that happened while I was talking. No, that didn't happen while I was talking about the video. I'm not sure when that happened. We then did the two intergalactic transceiver researches. So we we did the we did the research to get the intergalactic transceiver, which I showed you in the last video, and then we activated it, which got which did this thing here and got to that one, and that then allowed us to do the uh, the spaceship victory research. And so we needed to do that, this one. It's only five thousand packs, not too bad. This then allowed us to unlock all of the things for doing the actual the actual spaceship victory. Itself. So we that was that was quite a uh, big important one. We've got that one get done now So now we can start playing messing around with the victory ship and we then realized that we didn't have enough uh, Spaceship research to be able to build a big to build a big enough ship for what we wanted for the spaceship victory as you saw uh, in the last video So we started working on uh, factory spaceship seven and eight once we've got seven and eight done We will then be able to fly the ship that we've built and hopefully win, uh, win the game again But they're quite big and expensive researches and they require things like advanced science 2 which we're struggling with and oh, it matters to science 2 which we're really really struggling with and that's what's caused the research to grind to a halt. As you can see, we've got good supplies of... Ooh, actually, I didn't say good supplies of everything. That's not true. We've run, we've run out of energy 4. 
more over there. And we've run out of matter two coming in over here. I'm pretty sure it's matter two. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're not in a not in a perfect position, but, thing, but we're not doing too badly. Once we, at least once we get the matter up and running again, I think once we have that stone supply coming again, then we, when we should be okay. We should be able to run the system, the, the research at a, a reasonable speed and get the uh, factory spaceship seven and eight. And finally, when we did the transceiver, um, a, a secret um, extra research popped up here, the, uh, the Crestorio 2 logo, which, I mean, we're, we're pro we'll, we may try and do it just because it's there, but it is 666,000 researches, including all the most expensive ones, like the Advanced 1 and 2, and Matter, oh, actually only Matter 1, could be worse, uh, so that's going to be rather pricey, but we'd be, I feel like it'd be nice to do it just, just anyway. Maybe we'll have it running in the background while we're doing our retrospective and talking about things. Speaking of the retrospective, uh, we are, the next stream, which will be on the 29th of July, will be us having a bit of a look back over at what we've been doing in the past while we've been playing through this game, and answering all the questions from the viewers about why we did certain things, what we thought of the game, all that sort of stuff. So if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer, please stick them in the comments for this video, or come along and ask them on the Discord server. We'll make a note of them all, and then we can have a bit of a chat about them on the stream, and uh, see, if, see if our opinions differ, and see if we can answer all those burning questions like, why on earth didn't you use LTN, you nutcases? So, so yes, please come along to that stream. As I say, submit any questions you have and we'll, we'll have a good think about them. I will also then be back on the Wednesday after that, the 31st, to carry on with Satisfactory. I'm getting closer and closer to finishing it. I'm trying to boost the speed that I'm making all the various bits of computery stuff in order to make all the bit, all the things that are required by the space elevator to complete the final phase. I'm now on the, I'm on the home straight. It's just quite a long home straight at this point. <laughs> There will also be new series starting up on the channel uh, fairly soon, and there will always also be other videos coming out as usual. So make sure you keep make sure you're subscribed so you can keep an eye on it and see what's happening. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.